I want to talk about this moment a bit. So, I heard one version that um, Bill said, adapt to Chekhov uh, to deal with... Uh, you said what? Adapt to Chekhov for, to deal with writer's block. Is that true? Well, what happened was, um, I, had, I had writer's block, and after, um, I guess, I wrote um, One Crack Out. And Bill, Bill said to me, uh, all right, the important thing is to keep you working. Again, that's, that's Bill. Uh, keep you working. So I said, how do we do that, Bill? He said, well, let's do a translation. I said, Bill, I'm still struggling with English. You know what I mean? So um, he said, no, no, let's do a, let's do a, um, if, he said, if you could do a play, translate a play, what play would you like to translate? I said, well, I'd like to do Ibsen's Lady from the Sea. He said, oh, that's terrific. He said, let, let me see if I can get somebody to do a literal translation for you. He went away and came back, and he said, he can't do it for another year, this guy that I approached. He said, let's do a Russian play. I said, okay. He said, uh, let's do The Seagull. I said, okay. He, he said, it's about us, about the theater. I said, yeah. That's how that happened. Simple. He wanted to keep me working. <laughs> so we, you know, he, he got Donna Orwin on board. She did the literal translation for us. And the rest is history. <laughs> it, is one of, it is an iconic photograph for me. Yeah. Um, not only because the artists who are gathered around it, not only the, the strength of the talent in that room, uh, in the in the in the director, in the writer, in the performers. There's Peterson. There's Coulter. I mean, I mean, look at them. But it it also the photograph itself centers on a text. At the center of this picture, all lines go to a book, go to the words, which is very iconic for me. And it's also iconic because it's talking about Canadian theater and what it, what it thought it where and it thought it might go. Hmm? It's talking about where. It th thought it might go, looking at the kind of trajectory of how the Russian theater moved uh, so wonderfully at that moment. And everybody's in the same attitude that they, the original people were in. Chekhov right in the center. And some of the more modern uh, or the recent productions of Chekhov in the last 20 years have a lot more of the robust humor and yeah. kind of uh, absurdity yeah. of the text. And when I, when I did the translation for the seagull, I tried to find every bit of humor in it I could find. Because Donna Orwin said to me when we, before we started, she said, David, burn this into your brain. She said, Chekhov is simple, he's clear, and he's funny. And I never forgot that. Because this, this photograph and that production not only was about a play that I enjoyed seeing, but it's about the hopes and the aspirations of a whole Canadian community. Yeah. That's what's in that picture for me. What are your best uh, memories from the theater? Of the theater? Of any theater. Most of us have kind of pinnacle experiences that sometimes we go, yes. Uh, of the theater or of theatrical experience? I mean, theatrical experience. I mean, the, the, reading, uh, reading Urgell Carrader's review the next morning was one of the highlights of my life because it changed my life completely. It was actually a life-changing review. But did it change what David French thought of himself, or did it change just David's career? It gave me a bit more confidence. Right. Not that it gave me a total confidence, because I never will have, ever have that. But it gave me something. It made me feel good about myself. And does that last? Well, you know, I was an overnight, I was an 18 year overnight success. That's what I was. Because, you know, I started publishing when I was 15. And I, and I wrote Leaving, I wrote Leaving Home when I was, well, the, it opened when I was 33. That's 18 years. It's a long time, struggling. Wondering when, it, when I was ever going to... I always knew I would, you know. That, that was the interesting part. I always knew I would be successful, but I didn't think it would happen so fast. Right. 18 years, to me, it was fast. Because, well, usually the, the 
apprenticeship is about 10 years, but I thought mine was going to be longer. And I was quite willing to, to work, to still be there working my ass off. But if a complimentary review makes you feel better about yourself, and I speak from my personal experience, if a good review makes you feel good about yourself, a bad review does the reverse. And part of me has become to resent those kind, the power that that criticism mm -hmm. has over me, both to make me feel good and also to undermine who I think I am. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've, I resent that a lot now, and I'm not free of that. I mean, I, I only remember, really, I only really remember the bad reviews. Why? I don't know. But it's, it's, it's true, I think, with a lot of writers. They, they don't always remember the good ones. But the bad ones really stick. Do you remember a moment we met on Bloor Street? We met on Bloor Street. Um, Shakespeare Works, the company I was one of the starters of, had just received massively destructive reviews. And Soldier's Heart had come out right. and received a kick in the head. You got a kick in yeah. the head. And I still remember your rage over that. And I wondered, here's David with a huge career and such a wonderful body of work. And he's still enraged. Oh yeah, absolutely. That a script is so kicked in the head. Oh, absolutely. By because the it's like my, it's like one of my kids. It's like somebody saying, uh, "Jesus Christ, that's an ugly little kid." That's how I feel when somebody does that to me. I take it very, very personally. But then again, I always believe that everything's personal. Do you think David Bama still reads his reviews? Yeah, I do. Of course. Especially Mammoth. I mean, you know, he's, there's so much at stake. Let's talk a bit about being a Newfoundlander. How much, uh, how much do you feel uh, a Newfoundlander and how much of you, because you came to Central Canada when you were six. Yeah, I, we came here when I was six, but I've always felt like I was a Newfoundlander. Always. I always felt I was Newfoundlander first. I, I don't know. There's something about Newfoundlanders. It's really deep in the bone. My father used to uh, sit in Toronto and, um, you know, 40 years after he left, and if he was watching a television show and the, the water was lapping up on the shore, he'd start to cry. That's how deep it was in him. Right. Just any kind of wave coming on the shore. Because the Newfoundlanders have contributed so much to Canada in terms of the, the voice that comes, whether it's Pinsent or Rick yeah. Mercer or Rex Murphy or, yeah. or, you know, Mary Walsh. I mean, yeah, all good people. All good people who have this, uh, this real muscular core, emotional core on the inside. Why? Is it the ruggedness? Is it the... 400 years of rough history? And maybe isolation, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, Bob, because I, I left when I was six. Right. I'm not an expert on this at all. I don't pretend to be. I'm always surprised when people take me, think that I am an expert on this, I'm not. One of the plays, one of your plays that I enjoyed the most, um, not in, in terms of the fulfillment of Of the Fields Lately, but in a very different way was 1949. Yes. Uh, it was like a breath of fresh air to hear uh, the referendum of the vote talked about in a play. Was that hard to write that play? No, I wrote it very easily. I wrote it in one year. It's my longest play and I wrote it in very quickly. Whereas my shortest play, it took me four years to write and that's Saltwater Moon. I never know how long these things are going to take. But when, when Bill took over the uh, center stage, He said to me, okay, you can have as many characters as you want now in the play. I said, like, like Bill, 25? He said, yeah. I said, really? He said, yeah. So I went away and I came back with the play. It's 14 characters in that play. And he gulped. <laughs> I remember, he, uh, I watched his throat. He gulped. 
<laughs> but he did the play. But it doesn't get a lot of productions. One of the reasons why is because it's damn expensive now to do play with 14 characters. I hope Soul Pepper does it. And what did you think of Bill teaming up with Guy Sprung? I thought it was a big mistake. But um, in what way? Hmm? In what way? Well, I thought they were mismatched, just temperaments. But um, did you and Bill talk about it? No, no, never. <laughs>